Year. What's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter, and Instagram followers? It's your boy No Name back at it with another Giants video, another Giants preview, whatever you want to call it. I'm back, and I know this video is coming out late, guys. I apologize. However, you know, this week, or really these two weeks, are kind of what I'm stepping into, um, known as finals week, you know, coming towards the end of my winter, I mean, fall semester. They're doing a lot of finals, so my schedule's been sh shuffled around. I've been a bit more busy, you know, with studying for them, taking them, trying to ace them, and all that. So this video's coming out a bit later than usual. And, um, the, I'm just gonna let you guys know right now, the review slash recap slash reaction video, whatever you guys know it as, the video I make where I basically recap my thoughts on the game and whatnot, that one for this Dolphins vs. Giants game is also going to be out a bit later, but that's going to be because I'm going to be at that game. So I, I don't know if any of you guys listening out there, if you're going to be at that game, you know, I'd love to have a chance to meet y'all and whatnot. You can, you know, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter and we, we can meet up, we can talk. Um, I, I'm just putting that out there, you know, obviously I'm not a big YouTuber here or anything like that. I'm not a star or famous or anything to the point where it's like, hey, I'm meeting you guys because, you know, so you guys could have the, the thing to say that you met me and whatnot. No, I'm just saying that because it would be fun to meet my subscribers, even though I'm at like this stage where I'm very, very small. But I still love all you guys. You guys just gave me great support and whatnot. And it would be nice to, you know, meet up with some people other than the friends I'm going with to spend some time with at the Giants game because, uh, to be honest, I don't know how this is going to turn out, which is a nice segue into the actual preview for this game. I do not know how this game is going to turn out, and I didn't think I would say that at the beginning of the season, and I didn't think I would say that even at the bye week, uh, or you know, like even at the middle of the season, I always thought the Dolphins were going to be a surefire win. But with the way the Giants have been performing, and the way the, the Dolphins also have been performing for like the past... Uh, I want to say six weeks or so from since when they got their first win. The Dolphins have been competitive in every single game that they've played. The Giants, on the other hand, have only been competitive in about, like, I want to say, like, five games this season, maybe less. And obviously, as you guys know, we're 2-10, and ten, so we only won two out of those five games we were competitive in. The Giants are, um, I mean, we're 2-10. and ten. The Dolphins are 3-10. Uh, and ten. So it's like, and the Dolphins have just, like, they just been playing better on the field and that's really a sign of the coaching Brian Flores and that coaching staff over in Miami they might remain there next year I thought uh, the owners and the general manager were gonna do them dirty they brought them in this year specifically for the purpose to tank so that they could replace them next year when they uh, try to get better or maybe they're gonna tank again next year who knows what's gonna go down over there in Miami but Brian Flores and his coaching staff over there in Miami props to them because they got this team looking like a real football team every week week in week out and they look competitive they look you know prepared they look like professionals something that the new york giants simply do not look like at most times pat sherman and his coaching staff you know james betcher and mike shula and all the guys they do not do what brian flores does like i wouldn't mind having brian flores as a head coach just throwing that out there and the reason i'm throwing that out there is because He's still very unproven as a head coach, where at this point you could argue you know what you got with Pat Shermer. Uh, he's a guy that's kind of inconsistent, and if he doesn't really have talent around him, he's not going to succeed. But as an offensive coordinator, yo, man, he could do that job any day of the week. Brian Flores, one of the main things I've seen from his, you know, I guess, time in Miami, albeit it is a very short and small sample, is that the discipline goes a long way. And uh, the way he coaches, you know, goes a long way also. He has a lot of respect in that locker room. Something that Sherman just lacks. And I mean, I know that's going to affect us that game. Well, this game. But another thing is, um, uh, is like, like, let's talk about the injuries for a second, right? One of them I really want to talk about was Kevin Zeitler. He's, he left last week with an ankle injury, which is very strange because Zeitler, he's like an Iron Man of some sort, you know? Like, he's played like some crazy, like, 85 straight games, you know, without missing any. That's one of the reasons he's one of the best right guards in the game um unfortunately he might not be able to play this weekend that's kind of sad one because you know that's a it's a monument to your your work and it's a monument to how well you treat your body that you last that long but it's also uh i hope that this doesn't affect his 
his performance in the future. And I know um, some of you might be thinking, uh, I'm going a little too iffy with this, but ever since Saquon's injury, man, anybody that gets injured in an ankle, I, I just pray that they come back and they're that they're better than before. Because we, as we all know, um, wide receiver Golden Tate is out with a foot injury. Um, Corey Ballantyne is out with a concussion. Daniel Jones, of course, the main man, is out with an ankle injury also. Rhett Ellison is still out with a foot injury, as is Evan Ingram. And Janoris Jenkins apparently has an ankle injury, although I'm... In my opinion, that might just be a cover-up that the coaches just don't play him because of the whole Twitter fiasco where he calls somebody a retard and whatnot. I Like, I saw that on Twitter. Like, I saw the whole exchange happen. I won't say, like, as it happened, but I saw it, like, 10 minutes after it happened because of the timestamps. I, I just couldn't believe what I was reading. But anyway, other than that, the uh, Dolphins, their defensive tackle, Jared Willis, is out. Uh, Chandler Cox, their fullback, is out. Cornerback, Nick Needham, is out. Devontae Parker is out and Albert Wilson is out so they also have a good amount of injuries out there but like I said because of the type of teams that the Dolphin and the Giants are it's still a toss-up it really is and I'm very like I I'm very heavily leaning towards that we might lose this just because the way that Shermer has been coaching all right the way he has been coaching and I have to say this every video because I know people they uh they will find a way to misconstrue, misconstrue what I say. I support the tank because it's better in the long term. However, I want Pat Shermer gone not because he's losing his games, but because he can't win. And that, that sounds weird, right? But even last year, when last year wasn't supposed to be um, a tank year, it was supposed to be a progress year, we were supposed to win. Same thing for this year, we were supposed to win. We were not supposed to end up tanking. And then also, I see no progress in any of the players, mainly on the offensive side, because that's what Shermer's forte is. There's no progress there for anybody. There's no progress in Daniel Jones. Sure, he's gotten better a little bit by a little bit, but really, what's the difference between Daniel Jones that started in week three and the last time we saw him, which was against the Packers? I don't see a difference, and he doesn't seem to be improving in his pocket presence or his fumbling problem. There's no improvement in the offensive line. If anything, well, it's a fact. It's not a like an if anything statement. The offensive line has gotten worse since uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, Saquon Barkley has gotten worse since the beginning of the year. The offensive rookies, the only one that you could argue has gotten better is Darius Slayton. And then the rookies in general, they've all kind of been stagnant. You know, last game was a great performance from out of them, but that's definitely an outlier when you look at the entire year. So I just want to get that out there. We might very well lose this game, and I don't like it that we're going to lose this game because it's just another sign that Shermer's not making any progress in these players. Like, this should be a winnable game. You know what I mean? And even if we do win this game, it's not like um for the really hardcore people out there that, like, you know, hardcore support the tank. Like, I'm a supporter of the tank. I don't think I'm a hardcore. There's, like, people out there who support it no matter what. And that's fine. You know, that's completely fine. For you guys out there, it's not going to hurt the race for Chase because the Dolphins are, are, you know, they're 3-10. and 10. I'm pretty sure they have a strong schedule than us and whatnot, but it'll just work out so that we still are in a lock for the number two pick. The only game that really matters that we have to lose completely is the Redskins game, and I don't know if we're going to lose that just because of how bad the Redskins are, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We'll get there when we get there. Now let's talk about some, you know, some key matchups. Surprisingly, this is the first time I will ever say this, the Giants edge slash pass rush against the uh, Dolphins offensive line or offensive tackles. And what I mean by the first time I'm saying this is because for the entire year, I have never said a good matchup is going to be our pass rush against another team's offensive line. But that's how bad the Dolphins offensive line is. And uh, we all know the Giants pass rush is absolutely one of the worst in the league. The defense in general is one of the worst in the league. But they have a matchup that favors them this week because the Dolphins offensive tackles They've surrendered the most sacks of any team this year, 51 sacks. So they've surrendered 51 sacks, and Marcus Golden and the boys and Lorenzo Carter and O'Shane Zimenez, you know, they've, they've in general gotten 29 sacks. Like I said, one kind of like towards the bottom of the league in terms of the amount of sacks they're racking up. But this is a chance for them to increase those numbers and to, you know, stat pad or in general just help the team a bit because of how bad this, this Dolphins OT, you know, their offensive line is. Like I said, it's the worst in the league statistically. And if they can't capitalize on this, I don't see, to be honest with you, a reason to keep any of them in the future. Because 
like I said, you're going up against the worst team in the league. You should be able to rack up, I don't know, four sacks at least. Not from one person, but, you know, across the board, I'm expecting to see four sacks at least, but it's not going to happen. And I just have a feeling it's not going to happen because these players aren't pro progressing properly. But that's a matchup to keep your eye on. Another matchup to keep your eye on is uh, Julian Love versus Mike Gusecki. Safety tight end battle. And listen, Love, he's been performing really good the past couple weeks filling in for Drew Bill Preppers in that safety role. I would still love to see him out there. <laughs> Get that, I would still love. <laughs> anyway, I would still love to see him out there in his true position at slot corner because I think no matter what, he's always going to perform better at slot corner than at a safety position. But he's, he's been performing well and he's been one of the brighter spots in the Giants secondary for the past couple weeks. Now he's going to come up on sort of a test because Mike Gusecki is going to get a lot of passes thrown to him this game because there's two um, injured wide receivers out for the Dolphins. You know, uh, Devontae Parker and let me just find his name real quick. Da -da 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 -da. And Albert Wilson. Those two guys are out. They're both suffering concussions. They're not going to be um, playing this game or if they do, it's going to be like a last minute activation. So Love is going to have his hand full with Mike Gusecki because he's going to become a, like a main target on that team. And in general, I expect Betcher, or I would hope Betcher, to plan for covering that tight end and blocking out tight end routes. So, you know, forcing Fitzpatrick to go to his, you know, lesser receivers and whatnot. But that's another thing to keep your eye on. I would love for Love to lock him down. I would love for him to, you know, come out and have another great game. You know, maybe I'll only allow like one pass towards Gusecki and whatnot. But that is a bit wishful thinking, and I would love for James Betcher to actually plan according to this. But with the way he's been doing it, guys, I mean, it's a really a surprise. I'm in doubt a little bit. And now, the final matchup I want to talk about is actually kind of the opposite. The Giants wide receiver core as a whole versus the Dolphins cornerback core. This is another one that very much favors the Giants. Miami... They're not the worst in the league at letting up passing touchdowns. They're the second worst, but only by one. They've let up 31 passing touchdowns through the 13 weeks this season. That's second only to the Cardinals. But even then, it's just by one touchdown the Cardinals lead. So I'm going to call them both the worst, you know, passing defenses in the league. The Giants wide receiving core, he's passed, well, since, let's say, since the bye week. They've all shown flashes of being great. They've all shown flashes of being able to, you know, get behind coverage, get open, get into the end zone. More so Darius Slayton than anybody else. Because while Sterling Shepard is playing, and at the beginning of the season, Sterling Shepard was very much the number one on this team. His two concussions, like, I actually don't want him to be out there. He should not be playing right now. He might not even come back next year because he's considering retirement. You know, from, you know, sources that came out, you know, weeks and weeks ago. But, Sterling Shepard hasn't been targeted that much for the specific reason of protecting his health. Golden Tate has been a nice... This year, honestly, he should have been a number one type receiver after Sterling Shepard went down. But, Darius Slayton took over that role and Golden Tate is a nice, safe number two that can still get the job done. We have a nice trio out there that could honestly torch this Dolphins secondary and we can score very well on them however <laughs> however remember who I said the worst de passing defense in the league was the Arizona Cardinals well we actually played the Cardinals this year and you guys all know how that turned out and at that point in the year they were one of the they weren't the worst yet but they were one of the worst passing defenses and the Giants couldn't get anything on them now the difference is you know, it's a different time of the year, and also we have a different quarterback out there. So maybe Eli can take advantage of, you know, knowing how to read defenses better, a little bit better pocket awareness, and, um, you know, just a little bit better deep ball. But we'll see how it turns out. This is something that should happen. What should happen is Darius Slayton should have a 200-yard game, two touchdowns. Golden Tate should have a touchdown to him, maybe 100 yards. Sterling Shepard should have a couple, you know, like 80 yards or something also, and another touchdown. But what's going to happen is I think we're going to end up with something very similar to last week where one receiver is going to like burst out. He's going to be, you know, bursting at the seams with a bunch of yards and touchdowns, but the other two are going to struggle for some reason and the Giants can't capitalize in the end zone. That's that's just what I think is going to happen. And don't think I want to go out there and be very pessimistic like I am right now. It's just nothing from this team and specifically nothing from this coaching staff has shown me that they can take advantage of their advantages when they're in front of them. But that's just my opinion. 
You guys should let me know what you all think. But that's what I got for y'all today. That's the end of my preview video. Um, I honestly don't know. I'm not going to give a, oh, the Dolphins are going to win or the Giants are going to win. Because like I said, I honestly don't know how this is going to turn out. And also, whether we win or lose, we're still going to be around that number two spot to try and get Chase Young or Andrew Thomas or whatnot. Or maybe even trade down. So, that's what I got for y'all today. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. I like chatting with y'all. I'm out. You're... Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. You're...